Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. Last week's video was about some important practices of、uh, coxes in Xingyi. As already planned, I will keep introducing coxes-related topics for Tai Chi and Bagua. Today's video will focus on Tai Chi's coxes, a very confusing topic in the Tai Chi community. But first, let's warm up with the Dao De Jing commentary and Xiu Dao. Today's Dao De Jing sentence is "Shang Shan Ruo Shui," a very famous Taoist concept that has had a profound influence and impact on Chinese society, and of course, on Taoist-related energy practice as well. Following the gradual shift from the focus on the Universe to human society. From、uh, Chapter Eight, Lao Zi began introducing more specific principles applicable to individuals and society at large. So, the first sentence of this chapter is "Shang Shan Ruo Shui," which, as a result of the shift, has become. A very famous Taoist concept and the term that is widely used even today. Let me show you a photo that I took about six years ago. I actually carved these four characters on a wooden board as the decoration for my martial arts studio and a motto for myself. So. What is Shang Shan Ruo Shui? Shang means the best. Shan means goodness, virtue. This word appeared nine times in this short chapter. Ruo means to be like. Shui means water. Put together, it means true goodness is like water. Oh, the highest excellency is like. That of water. Then Lao Zi continued to justify his、uh, statement by saying, "Quote: 水善利，万物不争，处众人之所恶，故积于道。End quote. Translation: Water is good in benefiting all beings, without contending with anything. Situated in places despised by many others, thereby it is near Tao. End translation. Here, Lao Zi hinted at the concept of、uh, Wu Wei or non-action. <clears throat> Then he gave seven instances in accordance with the Tao. Then he concluded this chapter by saying. 夫为不争，故无忧。Oh, because of non-struggle, therefore there is no blame. In other words, if one proceeds naturally without ambition or envy, everything works out for the best. So, in this chapter, Lao Zi used the concept of water to express. The nature of a Tao as applied to humans, the way of the sage. Since according to Lao Zi, the sage's behavior is like water. Therefore, in the old times, the ancient Chinese. <coughs> therefore, in the old times, the ancient Chinese used the term "shui de" or "virtue of water." To describe the state of Jin Yu Dao or close to Dao. In Xiu Dao practice, Shang Shan Ruo Shui has been used as the guiding principle for Xiu Dao practitioners in cultivating life attitudes. Even though the Xiu Dao practice is an energy-oriented practice, the fundamental essence of its Philosophical approach to cultivating the required attitude that is the most suitable to Tao's practice is explained 
in that chapter. And the first four words, Shang Shan Ruo Shui, express this concept. Ancient Taoist Xiu Dao documents have often used this term as an important spiritual guidance to a practitioner. So, cultivating a Taoist life attitude, according to some Taoist schools such as the Northern School of Bei Pai, is indeed a critical step in practice. So, in Xiu Dao practice, we should keep our mind as calm as still water, then warm the water with fire so that the real yang energy will emerge. Here, the term fire actually means the mind. In other words, use the mind to focus on the mind in order to warm the water with fire. Also, in practice, the mind should be as gentle as the water when working on refining energy, which is the Tao's way of dealing with prenatal energy. Therefore, to cultivate prenatal energy, the mind should be as still as the water without judgment in refining energy. Let the energy circulate itself without being forced which reflects the Wu Wei concept, a concept that reflects the virtue of water, a state close to Tao. That's why this sentence is a critical one in cultivating a Taoist life attitude in order to practice Xiu Dao. So, please remember the term Shang Shan Ruo Shui. The highest form of goodness is like water. Now, let's move on to today's Tai Chi topic, Coxes in Tai Chi. So, topics covered in today's video include first, Coxes revealed, second, Coxes in Tai Chi documents, third, confusion of Coxes practice in Tai Chi practice, fourth, Correct Cox's practice in Tai Chi. Sixth, principle of Cox's practice in Tai Chi. Sixth, misperceptions. Seventh, demonstration. And eighth, takeaways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Topic one, Cox's reviewed. In last week's video, I introduced the Cox's practice in Xing Yi. In the first section of that video, I introduced the origin of the term Wei Lui. Wei Lui means the gathering and the flowing of water. Later Tao's practitioners used this term to describe the area at the base of the spinal column, commonly called the tailbone. The reason ancient Tao's practitioners used this term to name this area was due to its function in terms of energy refinement. In Taoism practice, for example, the small orbit circulation, energy starts from the lower Dantian and then gradually moves toward the Wei Lui area and then moves upward along the spine for further refinement. Since the Wei Lui or Wei Lui Guan or Wei Lui Gate is the first of the three gates in Tao's practice through which energy will pass, it is a critical area for energy refinement. In last week's video, I also pointed out that the practice of the coxes between Xiu Dao or Tao's meditation and the internal martial arts is different. Xiu Dao practice applies a static approach, meaning that when energy passes through the first energy gate or Wei Lui gate, a practitioner should remain in a static state, meaning the practitioner should not try to push the energy through the coxis area, but 
adopt a static approach of uh, mainly observing the energy movement, but not pushing it. Since the term energy has a different meaning and usage in martial art practice compared to Xiu Dao or prenatal energy refinement, it is essential to adjust physical movements, including body structure adjustment around the coccyx area in martial art practice. So, deliberately differentiating between Xiu Dao practice and martial art practice in the context of the coccyx area is a key aspect of any practice involving the coccyx. Martial practice should apply a dynamic martial approach, while energy refinement practice should apply a static energy refinement approach. In last week's video, I also mentioned that the earliest written record of Wei Lui or Coxis practice in martial art practice was in Nei Gong Si Jing, the internal practice for classics, kept and published by Song Shirong, part of the second generation of Xing Yin masters. Song Shirong was not the author of that book, and more interestingly, the Coxis was referred to by a different term, Gui Wei or Turtle Tail, in that book. Regardless, it was the first discussion of the Coxis in the context of the internal style of martial arts. So, from about a few hundred years ago, different terms like Wei Lui, Gui Wei, etc., all meaning the same Coxis area have been used in describing martial art practice in the Chinese martial art community. To have a better understanding of this term, I highly recommend watching last week's video titled Internal Style Concept 69, Coxes in Xing Yi. Link is in the description. To summarize, Coxes is an important body part in both energy refinement and the martial application. So, how is this term used in Tai Chi practice? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 2. Coxes in Tai Chi documents. Coxes, a key area very often considered a secret by most Tai Chi practitioners, has been recorded in some Tai Chi classics. I will first introduce this term as recorded in some important Tai Chi classics, then analyze the issue of this term in the next section. Then I will introduce a solution to it in the following section. That's the order of information that I will focus on in this video. The earliest written record of the term Wei Lui in Tai Chi classics is Wu Yuxiang's Tai Chi book. Wu Yuxiang, the founder of Wu Hao style Tai Chi, lived from 1812 to 1880 and was one of the most important Tai Chi scholars in history. His book contains an article titled Shi San Shi Xing Gong Ge Jue, or Thirteen Poster Practice Poem, in which the term Wei Lui was used. By the way, Tai Chi is also called Thirteen Poster in some old documents, since the Thirteen Poster means the combination of eight gates and five steps. Eight gates are the eight types of Tai Chi energy and the Five steps are Tai Chi's stepping and the body method. This is why people use the 13 posture to indicate Tai Chi. Unfortunately, there is no unanimous agreement on the author of this article. Some people believe it was written by Wang Zongyue 
Well, some other people even claim it was written by Zhang Sanfeng. The article was only found in Wu Yuxiang's book, so most likely it was written by Wu Yuxiang himself. Again, determining the author is not as important here as the content itself. More specifically, it was the first written record of this term in Tai Chi classics. So, in the 13 poster practice poem, it says, quote, Wei Lui Zhong Zheng Shen Guan Ding, Man Shen Qing Li Ding Tou Xuan, end quote. Translation The Wei Lui should be centered and straight so that the spirit penetrates to the top of the head. Well, the whole body becomes nimble by slightly being pulled upward by suspending energy. End translation. Here, the term Wei Lui is used as the first two characters of the two sentences. Now, let me move on to another famous Tai Chi poem titled Shen Fa Shi Yao, or Ten Importance of a Body method. It is a short poem that only contains 10 proverbs. Each proverb contains 4 words. This poem introduces the body structure of the Tai Chi practice. The ninth proverb of this Tai Chi poem says, Wei Lui Zhong Zheng, or the Wei Lui should be centered and straight which is just a shortened form of Wu Yuxiang's two sentences that I just introduced. It is worth noting that there is another famous Tai Chi poem titled Lian Fa Shi Yao, or Ten Importances of Practice Method, which introduces Tai Chi principles of mind and energy practice. So, very often, People take these two poems as a set of poems with each emphasizing different aspects. One is for the body method and the other is for the mind and energy practice. Some people even claim these two poems to be the foundation or reference for Yang Chengfu's Tai Ji Quan Shuo Shi Yao or Tai Chi Quan Ten Importance since they are so identical. Unfortunately, no one knows who authored these two poems. Also, nobody knows which one came first, Yang Shengfu's Ten Importance or these two poems. Again, content matters more than authorship or chronology. Any discussion of Tai Chi is incomplete without the mention of Chen Xin. I have talked about Chen Xin in many Tai Chi videos on this channel. Chen Xin, the most important Chen style master in terms of Tai Chi theory development, and the author of the most important Chen style Tai Chi book, Chen Shi Tai Chi Quan Tu Shuo, or Administration of Chen style Tai Chi also talked about Cox's practice in his book. In his book, he used another term, Kao Wei, to describe the Wei Lui, since Wei Lui or Cox's was also called Kao Wei in ancient TCM books. For example, Chen Xin said, quote, Kao Wei Huan Tiao Jue Qi Lai, end quote. Translation, the coccyx and the huan tiao, an acupuncture point, should push backward and upward. End translation. Chen Xin also used the term wei gu or tailbone to indicate the coccyx. For example, he said in his book, quote, wei gu chang qiang xue wei xiang hou fan. End quote. Translation. Tailbone and chang qiang an acupuncture point should slightly push backward and upward. End translation. These are some important quotes of the coccyx 
mentioned in some of the most important Tai Chi classics. So far, I have introduced the history of the term coccyx under different names. Unfortunately, since there is no detailed explanation and teaching of the coccyx in those Tai Chi classics, different Tai Chi styles and schools actually explain and train this area differently. For example, some schools push coccyx forward while others may push coccyx backward. This situation creates major confusion for Tai Chi practitioners. Even today, there is no unanimous agreement on this topic. Discussion and introduction of these confusions followed by their classification will help to better understand this topic. So, what is the key confusion of coccyx in Tai Chi practice? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 3. Confusion of coccyx in Tai Chi practice Following the topic introduced in the last section, I'd like to introduce the confusion related to the coccyx practice. So, what is it? It is whether the coccyx should put forward or backward, or in another direction. Since Wu Yuxiang did not explain it in the article collected in his book, and it is a very important topic of Tai Chi practice, different Tai Chi styles or even different practitioners of the same style explain it differently. I'd like to summarize all of these explanations and the practice into three categories. They are first, coccyx pushes forward, second, coccyx pushes backward, and the third, coccyx points downward. Now, let me explain them one by one. First, coccyx pushes forward. Those Tai Chi practitioners whose coccyx practice falls into this category believe that coccyx should push forward and upward. For example, Hao Shao Ru, grandson of Hao Wei Zhen, one of the most important Wu Hao style masters, also taught Sun Lu Tang, the founder of Sun Xiao Tai Chi, wrote in his book, quote, Liang Gu Yu Li, Tun Bu Qian Shou, Ji Gu Gen Xiang Qian Tuo Qi, Dan Tian, Wei Zhi Wei Lui Zhong Zheng, end quote. Translation, two hips have strength, the rear end pushes forward, and the end of the spine which is the coccyx pushes forward in order to hold the dantian area or the lower stomach upward. That is the Wei Lui Zhong Zhong, or the Wei Lui is centered and straight. End translation. So, according to this category of belief, coccyx should push forward and upward. Now, let me show you a couple of Hao Shao Ru's Tai Chi photos. Please pay attention to his lower Dantian area. We can clearly see the forward pushing tendency or motion of the coccyx area. Second, coccyx pushes backward. Those Tai Chi practitioners whose coccyx practice falls into this category believe that coccyx should push backward and upward. For example, Chen Xin, the most important Chen style Tai Chi scholar said that the coccyx should push backward and upward, which I have explained in the second section. However, bear in mind that every time Chen Xin talked about the coccyx movements, his objective was to strengthen the Dang Jin or the strength of the crotch area by keeping the hip area open or expanded. So, his objective is to strengthen the whole hip and the crotch area. 
Now, let me show you some photos of Chen Fake, the Tai Chi legend of last century. From his photo, we can see that his coccyx is pushed slightly backward. By the way, I'd like to show you some photos of Yang Chengfu, the great Yang style master who created Yang Shi Ta Da Jia Tai Chi Quan or the big frame Yang style Tai Chi. Please pay attention to his real end area. Some people claim that he pushed his coccyx backward. Well, actually, it's not so. Please do not confuse the body leaning forward with the coccyx pushing backward. Yang Chengfu's photo only illustrates the forward leaning body structure but is not necessarily a demonstration of the backward pushing coccyx posture. It is a very important point that I have to clarify here. Third, coccyx point downward. Those Tai Chi practitioners whose coccyx practice falls into this category believe that coccyx should naturally point downward. For example, Sun Lu Tang, the founder of the Sun style Tai Chi, also a famous Xing Yi and Ba Gua master, mainly falls into this category. In his teaching and writing, he talked about how the coccyx should drop downward. Now let me show you a few of Sun Lu Tang's Tai Chi photo. His naturally sinking posture caused by downward pointing coccyx can be observed clearly. Now you may already have gotten confused. Also, you may be wondering which coccyx method is correct and which one you should follow since all of them were great Tai Chi practitioners in history. Well, that's why I said at the beginning of this section that there has been a lot of confusion in dealing with coccyx. However, you have to know that this video is not aimed to confuse you but to make information in an organized fashion for a better understanding of the information that will be introduced in the next section. So, what is the right method of a coccyx practice in Tai Chi? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 4. Correct coccyx practice in Tai Chi. Based on what I have introduced in the previous section, you may already have gotten the impression that managing the practice of a coccyx is complicated. To say that least, yes, it is due to the nature of a Tai Chi practice. However, no matter how complicated it may look, we should always be able to demystify it and extract common principles to guide our practice. And the practice of coccyx is no exception. Let me explain. First of all, the three approaches of the coccyx mentioned among different styles of Tai Chi based on what I have quoted from Tai Chi classics and some explanations of those documents are all correct. In other words, each of the three approaches was actually developed and applied to reach a specific Tai Chi objective according to the Tai Chi structure of a style. Each Tai Chi style applies a unique body structure and those three approaches were designed to better fit the style's requirements. For example, the coccyx position used in different body structure will each have a different impact on Tai Chi practice. Let's consider Chen style Tai Chi and Wu Hao style Tai Chi posture for analysis. Chen Fa Ke applies a much lower posture compared to 
Hao Shao Ru's higher body posture, which made them both adopt different coxes and hip positions. We all know that the lower Dantian area should be flexible without blockage, but can be strengthened when necessary. And the flexibility of the lower Dantian area is a prerequisite of strengthening it whenever necessary. Chen style, which slightly extends coxis backwards and upward, will improve the flexibility of the lower Dantian area while maintaining a lower posture. But Wu Hao style, for example, in Hao Shao Ru's practice, the coccyx should steadily extend forward and upward in a natural posture, so that the lower dentin area is flexible yet solid, which is suitable to inject Tai Chi energy into the opponent's body. Speaking from training and teaching experience, there is no such fixed coccyx pattern. Meaning that the movement of the coccyx, forward, backward, or downward, depends on the Tai Chi movement in terms of its martial intent and its energy type. For example, when sending Tai Chi energy forward, such as Peng Force, the forward coccyx movement is most suitable. When applying Dan Tian rotation, especially the body rotation where the stance is fixed, a backward coccyx motion is the most suitable. For example, Chen style applies this type of coccyx movement very often where the lower dentin area turns. When the body is stabilizing itself, or the body is executing its pending motion, the downward pointing coccyx motion is suitable for this situation. Again, specific Tai Chi energy and the martial intent requires a specific coccyx motion, meaning a fixed coccyx motion across the board is incorrect. In other words, the coccyx movements described in those Tai Chi classics were actually meant for different specific Tai Chi movements. So, what is the solution? Well, it is very simple. You have to analyze the martial intent of each movement specifically and pay attention to the movement of the coccyx when practicing Tai Chi forms. With time, the skill will be internalized. It takes time and effort, but it is necessary to reach an advanced Tai Chi level. Furthermore, it is worth noting that all three types of coccyx movement should be subtle, or else the coccyx area would become stiff, then it is hard to control the movement. So, any action of the coccyx in Tai Chi practice should be very subtle. This is the key point, so do not overdo it. There are many more detailed discussions that are necessary to explain this topic at a new level. However, in the interest of time, let's keep it for the future. Now, let's move on to the next topic where I will introduce some important principles related to coccyx practice. Topic 5. Principles of coccyx practice in Tai Chi Practice is commonly considered a Tai Chi secret that definitely involves a lot of detailed analysis. Also, the practice of this area may be very subtle, but the effect is great since it is a key practice to reach an advanced Tai Chi level. So, introducing some important principles will deepen your knowledge. Let me introduce three important principles today. 
I created all of them, and hopefully they will help you in your Tai Chi practice in terms of mastering the coxes. They are Qian Song Yao Yuan, forward should be Fa. Second, Xiang Hou Yao Rou, backward should be flexible. And the third, Xiang Xia Yao Chen, downward should be extended. Let me explain them one by one. First, Qian Song Yao Yuan, or forward should be Fa. This proverb means that when the coccyx physically pushes forward and upward, then though the movement is subtle, the visualization or the intent should extend further. It should be at least as far as the place where you want to send the energy to. This is a very advanced Tai Chi practice since it relates to mind work. It also requires a lot of testing with the Tai Chi partner in order to master its martial application in push hand and self defense situations. Second, Xiang Hou Yao Rou, or backward, should be flexible. When the coccyx moves backward and upward, the movement should be subtle. In other words, the lower dantian area should be flexible yet maintain sufficient strength. The backward coccyx movement can strengthen the lower dantian area for strong fa jin, or else the coccyx movement will lose its objective. Again, the adjustment of coccyx here is for tai chi fa jin or power release purposes. Third, Xiang Xia Yao Chen, or downward should be extended. When the coccyx tends downward, or the coccyx point toward the ground, the body should be in a dynamic state. For example, the head extends upward while the coccyx extends downward. Likewise, the coccyx would remain in a relaxed state if the body is relaxed and in a static state. While the body is in a relaxed static state, the coccyx should be naturally relaxed as well, or else it would make the lower dantian area stiff. However, as long as the body moves, the coccyx should extend downward. Those were three important proverbs for coccyx practice. I hope you will test them with a partner in order to experience their effectiveness. Tai Chi is the physical practice oriented style, so you need to work on it physically. Now, let's move on to the next topic where I will debunk a commonly happened mistake in Cox's practice. Topic 6 Misperceptions. Even though Cox's practice is the rarely discussed topic in the community due to its challenging nature in terms of practice, it is nonetheless largely rife with misperceptions. For example, some people believe that Tai Chi practice emphasizes the concept of Wei Lui Zhong Zheng or Coxit should be centered and straight. So, in practice, Coxit should point downward without any forward or backward motion. That is the misperception. Let me debunk this. Wei Lui Zhong Zheng means centered and straight. Yes, it is true. However, we have to define what it means for Wei Lui to be centered and straight. In the classical Chinese language, Zhong means without leaning toward the side. In English, it translates to being centered. So, maintaining an artificially centered state is incorrect. Let me show you a photo of Yang Chengfu, a great Tai Chi master. His body leaned forward, but his coccyx and the spine are zhong or being centered since they did not lean to the left or to the right. 
Then the second word zheng or straight means the body is balanced. Let me show you another photo of Yang Chengfu in a single leg stance. It is zheng since his posture is balanced. So Wei Lu Zhong Zheng or coccyx should be centered and straight has nothing to do with the coccyx moving forward and backward. Now let me demonstrate a Tai Chi movement to illustrate the coccyx practice. Topic 7 Demonstration Today I will demonstrate a Tai Chi movement Qing Long Chu Shui or Black Dragon Out of Water. It involves the subtle movement of coccyx. It is very subtle and very hard to observe, but it still affects the overall Tai Chi structure and energy transmission. Qing Long Chu Shui of Chen Style Slow motion. Now with a stretch. <coughs> Topic eight. Take a waste. First, coccyx revealed. Coccyx is an important body part in both energy refinement and martial application. We have to differentiate its function between both practices. Martial art practice needs to manage this area well in order to generate martial power. Second, Coccyx in Tai Chi documents. Some Tai Chi classics mentioned Coccyx as the key principle in Tai Chi practice. It has been considered an advanced topic which lacked detailed explanation in the old days. Third, confusion of uh, coccyx practice in Tai Chi practice. Coccyx practice has been mentioned in some uh, Tai Chi classics. However, due to the fact that in the old times, authors of uh, those documents emphasized a specific aspect of uh, coccyx practice. Very often, those writings seem contradictory to each other. Fourth, correct coccyx practice in Tai Chi. You have to analyze the martial intent of each movement specifically and pay attention to the movement of the coccyx when practicing Tai Chi forms. Fifth, principles of coccyx practice in Tai Chi. Three important principles for Tai Chi coccyx practice that I created are first, Qian Song Yao Yuan, forward should be far, second, Xiang Hou Yao Rou, backward should be flexible, and third, Xiang Xia Yao Chen, downward should be extended. Six, misperceptions. Some people believe that Tai Chi practice emphasizes the concept of Wei Lui Zhong Zheng or coccyx should be centered and straight. So in practice, coccyx should only point downward without any forward or backward motion. That is the misperception. Don't forget to check out the demonstration section to get a better idea of coccyx practice in Tai Chi. That brings us to the end of today's video. Thanks for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.